Hey everyone, back to the regular programming here, uh, so no more vacation videos. Uh, you can kind of see here, this is the shot shows you uh, where I'm storing the wings at with my next door neighbor. Um, and, uh, you know, anytime anybody shows up, it's the rundown of all the things that I've got going on. And I'm sure my neighbors are just really sick of uh, listening to all the, the little nuanced things that I'm dealing with uh, on the build. Um, we got the airplane. So this is the second fuel tank that I'm working on. Um, I, Basically, I completed one whole wing um, and then needed to wait to do the other one because, uh, you know, it's the, the wing barn dance uh, whenever you change anything out. And um, since the Pro Seal is very time limited, uh, basically, you get it going and you complete that step. So, um, but uh, like I mentioned in the other video, uh, boy, it works so much better when you actually follow the instructions. Um, <laughs> it's, I know it's kind of crazy, um, but basically this is uh, the process. Uh, you get the pro seal on, make sure that it's uh, nice and goopy along the lines, and smooth it out. And uh, I put a couple clecos in to make sure that it didn't move around too much when I was putting it into place. Um, but then get it onto the wing, uh, cleco it onto the wing, and then cleco the the, um, uh, the the rear portion of the fuel tank on. And uh, once that's done, then you can go through, because everything's lined up at that point in time. It's, it, it, that, that's how it's going to go on. Um, there was one video that I watched uh, or blog post on a builder where they put the Pro Seal on, clecoed it on the wing, um, put the clecos in place, and then left it on the wing. Uh, the problem was that the Pro Seal actually is an adhesive, and uh, any, any bleed out was going to uh, adhere the, the fuel tank to the wing, so they had a little bit of a challenge getting it off. But knowing that, it's like, okay, well, I'll get it on, click the uh, rear or uh, the rear portion of the fuel tank on, and um, then take it right back off. And, and I did indeed have some squeeze out uh, as part of that process. Um, but, you know, it goes pretty quick. It's a little messy. Um, you know, the gloves uh, are a must. Uh, Harbor Freight is... Uh, my go-to for the the cheap and expensive gloves but because uh, that way you just you go through them pretty quick you just take them off as you get too too goopy and go from there so and uh, of course once you get the um the fuel tank uh, the rear portion of the fuel tank clicked on there and then set it down and go through and click the uh rear portion of the ribs onto the rear uh fuel rear portion of the fuel tank there um so you're only about halfway done by the time you finish it on the wing. And uh, it's already locked into place, so this is just a matter of uh, getting the, the rivets to uh, go into the, the rear portion of the the ribs there. And I've been going through and cleaning my Clecos whenever I'm done. Uh, here I'm just touching up uh, some holes I accidentally drilled in the uh, the wing tip there. Um, but it, it is a little time-consuming to clean clean up the, the Clecos, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I'd prefer to try to save as many of them as I can. Um, I was back to uh, putting the rear skin on after I had uh, completed uh, a bunch of the, uh, the wiring that I had going on. Um, it's kind of fun doing that. Uh, the, the rib moves around a little bit, so you have to be careful to make sure that you line everything up um, and don't, you know, really tweak things around. Um, but you know, for the most part, it goes on pretty easily. It's just, there. It, my method of putting the Clecos on is, uh, you know, m much like I think if you've watched Evans, you know, you pick a structural piece, um, you line it up with that, and um, then whenever I'm doing the, the Clecos, it's every other hole. Um, so it gets them in there nice and tight. Anyway, so here's the problem that I was running into. If you look at the drawing on the right-hand side, um, there's a C-channel that is the green section there. And, uh, you know, that's exactly how I did it. Uh, the C-channel portion, the C-portion of the channel was pointing forward. Um, but when you go to put the uh, back stop or the, the rear seat stops in place, um, there's, there, the, there's a, a piece that goes in there, and um, it, it, there's an open section where you, the an arrow is there. So, and if you look at the actual part, there's holes going all the way across. So there's nowhere to really to attach them. Um, it just didn't fit right. And I mean, I spent a fair amount of time evaluating, you know, had I done something wrong? Was it in, done installed correctly? Um, you see that gap there where 
so only that first rivet hole would go. There would be nothing to attach that second rivet hole to the right um, to. So I devised a plan to uh, put a, a, a shim in place to give it a little more structural rigidity. Um, I have some scrap aluminum, 6061 aluminum, and that's what I cut it out. I just basically had this unique fold to it so that that first fold sits inside the C-channel and then the other piece folds in front and then there's a, a, a piece that sits on the, uh, um, the longer run that goes in place. And um, so that's another shot of that there. Um, I, it, it worked really well. Um, and it gives me more surface area to attach that rear seat back stop onto. Um, you know, it was just basically a square piece and uh, I cut and folded it in a way that it slid into the C channel and then a bracing on the front. And um, if you look down there in the lower portion of that vid the picture, you can see how it attached. Um, and it gave me um, a another point uh, for that, that rear bracket to install. And that rear bracket is actually fairly strong. Um, so I don't doubt that it wouldn't be a problem, but you know, I've got it all apart. Um, you can see where that piece just slips in between and it, and it fits real nicely in there. Um, so it's very, very structurally sound at this point in time. So, um, pretty happy with that. Anyway, uh, pro seal was, uh, done. Fuel tanks was tested and, um, my next door neighbors stopped by, uh, Grace, she's signed her like four or five, something like that. Uh, you know, I try to have her pull a trigger on the, the, the rivet gun. Just, she's very, very friendly little girl. And she's, uh, um, very, um, interested in the process. I think, I think so it's, it's, it's kind of fun, you know, keeping her interested. Um, but anyway, so, um, I just went through and, uh, finished riveting this one up. Um, I think a little bit later on there might be a video of how I was testing the tanks, but basically it's just, I'd fill them up with water and um, make sure there weren't any seals. And I did have a little leak in this one, just uh, pretty similar to the other one. But again, it was on the end. It's going to be something that's going to be easily addressed. So not even, not even concerned about it. Um, I'll, I'll take care of that a little bit later because I'm going to make us mix up a little pro seal to, to take care of it. Um, this is Jason. Uh, he's one of my neighbors that's been uh, helping flip the wing. In fact, I think he's over for that purpose uh, at this time. Um, yep, sure enough. Here it is. This is uh, the process of flipping it. Um, it's a, you know, it's a tight space, uh, but uh, having watched uh, the, the gentleman building over in the UK and working in his garden shed, I'm not going to complain. Um, so, but once we got it flipped over, then it's, uh, you know, I, I tend to keep working while other people are talking because uh, I don't have to pay, you know, it, this is just drill, rivet, drill, rivet, drill, rivet through the whole process. Um, got a, if you see the camera was showing up on top there, there's a shot I've got of that uh, going there. Um, then we move this wing off to bring, bring in the other wing because if you remember from the previous video, it was short some rivets and uh, the, those gold rivets are at the end or the gold clicos, I'm sorry. Um, it's just was gonna be a lot easier because there was enough of these holes for me to set this back up on the bench and take 15, 20 minutes to, to populate this. These are the, the rivets that Scott had sent out to backfill the ones that I was short. Um, and oddly enough, I was still short, so I'm not really sure how the count got off on that, but um, I think there was five left that I needed to do, so I was just gonna leave it on the wall. Ah, here's, here's where I was testing the fuel tank. Uh, basically, I just tossed the fuel, the the garden hose in the end there, and filled it up until um, it was totally full. And um, then when it was done, I just used a, a hose to drain it out until it got mostly empty, and then um, used just lifted it up until it all drained out. Um, I did this process uh, before, or when I did the first rear portion of the fuel tank, and I was a little concerned uh, about the moisture being in there and the potential for rust. Um, I think these fuel tanks sat for probably four or five months before I was able to come back to this. And uh, when I took the rear portion of the fuel tank off, I was amazed that there was like almost nothing going on from a, a moisture perspective. So the resiliency of the, the aluminum is uh, quite robust. Um, you know, we live in a fairly dry climate here in Colorado, so it's not that 
not not the huge of a deal, but uh, the fact that there was moisture and it was it was sealed at the time too. So because uh, I, I had the, the the fuel cap on there and um, uh, you know, so it just it wasn't going to go anywhere. But I don't know. Uh, so you know, I'm sure when I get to the point where I'm starting to put fuel in it, uh, you know, that'll all kind of uh, sort of so to speak wash out in the end. Um, and we got the other fuel tank or the other wing off, got the other one back over to so that I could finish up. But this is just sort of repeated that. Um, but you know, they've been the neighbors have been super helpful in getting this taken care of. Anyway, um, thanks for tuning in, and uh, there'll be another video here in a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks very much.